I'm Marley Bird, and in this video, I will show you how to make the Vertical Herringbone Crochet Blanket. This blanket has a lot of texture and is very visually appealing, and it is rather simple. You only need to know how to create single crochets, double crochets, and chains. With my help, you will be making this blanket in no time. Go ahead and grab the free pattern and your materials and join me back here and we will get started. The herringbone stitch pattern is really lovely and it is just a two row repeat. And on the right side row, you'll see you have these chains that are really raised up on the right side of the fabric and that's what creates this cool herringbone look. How neat is that? We keep the side edges in the single crochet chain one stitch on both sides and then there are double crochet chain ones behind those chains on the front. This is a very simple stitch pattern. We will be using a size H crochet hook and a worsted weight yarn for this particular design. The instructions have us chain 177. For the video, I will be doing a smaller amount and the repeat is 12 plus nine. and there's nine. So I have one repeat of 12 plus nine. I now will jump into pattern, and this is a right side row. We double crochet in the fifth chain from hook. You never count the one on your hook. So one, two, three, four, five. I will yarn over, go into that chain, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, draw through two, yarn over, draw through two. Now all of these skip stitches here, they count as a double crochet and a chain one and then a double. I'm gonna take a stitch marker and if we're looking at the hook, the loop behind the hook, you can see that, like that V, so that's the first one. Skip the next one and put your marker in the following one, right there. I'm gonna put my stitch marker into that spot because that will be the stitch or the chain I work into at the end of the next row. And that's very important. It's hard to find otherwise. Now I carry on with the pattern, which is this. I chain one and I will skip the next chain and double crochet in the next. So I chained one, skip one, double crochet in the next chain. And I will do this all the way down the row. That's what that star means in the pattern. I chain one, skip a chain, double crochet in the next chain. I'm doing a row of basically just double crochets and chain one. So far so good, let's go ahead and move on to row two. You will turn your work and we begin row two with a chain one. Now we will place a single crochet in this very first double crochet there. All right, if you wanna put a marker there, you can, but I feel like you're gonna be able to find the last stitch from here on out. It's just on that first row that we needed a little help. Now I will chain one, come to the next double crochet and single crochet, chain one, come to the next double crochet and single crochet. All right, so that's what was in the parentheses and we did that twice. Now, here is our repeat that we will continue to repeat all the way down the row. We will chain one and then double crochet in the next double crochet. And we do that a total of four times. So that was one. Now we chain one, double crochet in the next double crochet, and that's two. Chain one, double crochet in the next double crochet, that's three. Chain one, double crochet in the next double crochet, and that's four. Now, the next part of the parentheses we will do twice. We chain one, single crochet in the next double crochet, chain one, single crochet in the next double crochet. All of that, from this chain one all the way down to that single crochet, you repeat down to the last two stitches. And you might be like, well, I, I don't know what I have here. I don't have two stitches here. You, you have what you need right here, okay? So here we go, let's see here. We're down here to this last bit where my marker is. We will chain one, 
we will skip the next chain one space and we will single crochet in the last double crochet, which is right there. It's that marked stitch because remember that counted as a double crochet. This is really the background of the entire blanket. It's on the foreground that we will work those chains to create the herringbone type look. But the blanket itself is really in this shape. As I bring in my swatch here, we're looking at the back side of it. If I set one on top of the other here, what we're looking at over here, this set right here, those are the single crochets that are represented right here. These doubles are represented right here, and these single crochets are represented right here. So it's just a replica of what the back of this swatch looks like. It's just one repeat. The swatch is two repeats, and your blanket is way more than that. So um, let's go ahead and turn our work and continue on to row three. I don't need this marker anymore, so I can go ahead and remove it. And let's begin row three. And row three is what is going to start off your row repeat. You repeat row three, rows three and four for the entire blanket. So it's important to understand this row. This is a right side row. So this is the row we will begin to build the herringbone. We start off with a chain one. We single crochet in the first single crochet. Then we chain one, single crochet in the next single crochet chain one, single crochet in the next single crochet. Okay, you with me so far? Here's where we're going to build our herringbone. We will chain five. I want you to skip two double crochets. So we're gonna skip a double, skip a double, and in the next chain one space, we're going to drop down. So we're gonna come down here to that chain one space. And we're going to work into the actual chain. So I'm gonna put my hook into the actual chain. And now we work a slip stitch. So I yarn over, pull a loop through, and then pull that loop through the loop on my hook. Now I will chain five. I will skip two double crochets Come over here to this single and work a single crochet into that single, chain one, and then single crochet into the next single. That is your repeat, okay? So you would repeat that chain five, single and two, that chain one in the row below, chain five, single into the single, chain one, single into the single. You do that all the way to the end of the row. And when we get to the end, we will skip this last chain one. We chain one and we single into that last stitch there. Okay. Now, once again, let's bring in my swatch here so you can see what we've done. Okay. So we did our singles. We chained five. We dropped down to the row below. We did a slip stitch. We chained five, we went to the next single, we did a single, chain one single, then you chain five, come across, and we drop down to the row below and did a slip stitch, chain five, came over to the next single crochet, did a single, chain one single, and at the end of the row, we chain one and single onto the last stitch. See how that works up along the entire row? That's the right side. So on the wrong side, which is a row four, we now will work back, but we will not work into those chain five sections. We will actually work into the double crochets that we skipped over and uh, it'll come out perfectly. So let's turn our work and begin row four. So we have a chain one, single crochet in the first single crochet, chain one, single crochet in the next single, chain one, single crochet in the next single, and here we go. We're going to chain one. You're gonna go to the first double crochet right here, and we will double crochet. I'm completely moving those chain fives out of the way. They are, they are a non-entity to me. They're just hanging out there. Whoa. <laughs> then I chain one, double crochet in the next double, chain one, double crochet in the next double, 
chain one, double crochet in the next double. Okay, so now I've worked into each one of those double crochets that I had skipped over. I chain one, single crochet into the next single, chain one, single crochet into the next single. That is your full repeat. It's just like row, um, row two, isn't it? You know, only this time we are skipping in front of those uh, chain fives. They weren't there on row two. But can you see how that works up? You do that all the way to the end of the row. At the end of the row, you chain one, skip that chain one, and single crochet at the end. Brilliant, isn't it? And now we turn and we repeat. Super easy, let's do it one more time. So this is row three, this is our first repeat. So I chain one, single crochet in the first single, chain one, single crochet in the next single, chain one, single crochet in the next single, and I will chain five. One, two, three, four, five. I will skip two double crochets, and underneath the next chain one, I will go to this one, so I'm not going to this one, but the one underneath it. I will work into it and do a slip stitch. Chain five, skip two double crochets, come all the way over here to these singles, put a single into the first one, chain one, put a single into the next one, and then you would repeat from this chain five again to the last two stitches, which is chain one, skip a chain one, single crochet in the last. Turn my work, this would be row four. Again, we have to build our background fabric, so I chain one, single in the first, chain one, single in the next, chain one, single in the next. Now I chain one, and I'm gonna, again, I'm moving those chain fives out of the way so I can get to my double crochet fabric here. I double crochet in the first double crochet, chain one, double crochet in the second double crochet, chain one, double crochet in the third, chain one, and double crochet in the fourth. Chain one, single crochet, so I gotta find my single, there's my single. Chain one, single into the next single, and then that would be your repeat. Till you get to the end, you chain one, single in the last single. See how easy that is? And it just gives such a packed, impactful um, stitch pattern right there. I mean, it just really shows up. And these are loose, like there's nothing, nothing holding them down other than that one slip stitch right there. And with the entire fabric itself, it just looks really super cool with all of these herringbone type stitches across the entire row. The pattern indicates that you should repeat rows three and four until your blanket measures 52 inches or 132 centimeters ending on a row four. Once your blanket is complete, go ahead and weave in all of your tails and then add fringe to the edges. This blanket is sure to be a wowza in your family room. I hope you've enjoyed this video and I helped you out with any tricky bits that you found in this free pattern. I'm Marley Bird and I'll catch you again soon. Bye.